It is spring 238 BC, nearly two and a half thousand years ago. In a dim temple, a nine-year-old boy grasps his father's hand and repeats what he is told to say. He will hate the Romans for as long as he lives. Hannibal was conducted to an altar and having laid his hand on the offerings was bound by an oath to prove himself as soon as he could an enemy of the Roman people. Hannibal drove the Romans to the brink of despair and defeat. His genius was such that even today, his battle tactics are studied in military colleges around the world. More than 2,000 years ago, a man called Hannibal of Carthage crossed the Alps with tens of thousands of mercenaries and 37 elephants in the middle of winter. His mission was to destroy Rome. He spent 16 years on enemy soil and devoted his entire life to battle against the Romans. But who was Hannibal Barca? Hannibal is a, a curious character, historically. We, we know quite a lot about Hannibal as a general, as a, as a leader, and, and indeed as a, as a politician. We know very little about Hannibal the man. Compared to, say, Alexander the Great, we, we know very little about his family, uh, about his tastes, uh, about the sort of things he enjoyed. We're not even sure exactly how Hannibal appeared. Aged only 25, Hannibal was already in command of a huge army. His father had been a great general who had made his name in battle between Carthage in North Africa and Rome. Carthage, in what is now modern-day Tunisia, was the dominating power of the Western Mediterranean for nearly six centuries. A brutal force, the Carthaginians fought the Romans in a series of battles known as the Punic Wars, which lasted for over 100 years. This was a bitter and bloody struggle as both sides fought for control of territory. The young Hannibal had been raised in an atmosphere heavy with hatred and loathing for his people's most bitter enemy. He was the obvious choice to lead the Carthaginian army, now stationed in a settlement in modern-day Spain. Hannibal was adored and respected by his men. As their commander, he was prepared to undergo hardships side by side with his soldiers. Many have seen him wrapped in a military cloak lying on the ground amid his soldiers. His dress was not at all superior to that of his equals. He was at once by far the first of the cavalry and infantry and foremost to advance to the charge, the last to leave the engagement. To succeed at that age, you needed brilliance. You needed charisma. You needed a skill with men. You needed personal bravery to demonstrate to men double your age, much more experienced, that you were the man to lead them. You needed luck. Um, and quite possibly, you needed a big idea, too, something that would drive these people to forward and keep them following you. Hannibal's big idea was to crush the Romans. His lifelong mission had begun, and he planned his campaign of hatred. The dominant feature of his strategy was to be the acquisition of allies. Neither Carthage nor Rome could ever hope to expand their territories without the support of Mediterranean countries. Each force greedily coveted the land that lay between them. In 219 BC, Hannibal attacked Saguntum in Spain a city with strong connections to Rome. This attack lit the match that was to ignite one of the most extraordinary campaigns in military history. Saguntum fell. Rome was furious and demanded the 29-year-old Hannibal surrender. When he refused, war and Carthage was declared. It was 218 BC and the Second Punic War had begun. Hannibal was now pitched against one of the mightiest forces on Earth. There's no doubt that Hannibal would have realised that, that war with Rome was a very, very serious undertaking indeed. Just before the war began, uh, it's reckoned that Rome had roughly 700,000 uh, infanteers from which to draw their armies from. I mean, Rome could put army after army after army into the field against Hannibal. 
But it was not war with the Romans that was Hannibal's most immediate problem. It was geography. Rome was a thousand miles away from Spain. Getting there and avoiding Roman sea power in the Mediterranean would mean crossing two mountain ranges, the Pyrenees and the Alps. Hannibal was about to attempt one of the most extraordinary journeys in ancient history. Hannibal, unusually for Carthaginian generals, was, was a risk taker. Uh, and he was willing to pay the costs and take the risks of crossing the Alps to outflank Rome and to actually engage Rome in what, in, in modern terms, would be seen as its center of gravity, its hold on the Italian peninsula itself. He decided that the best time to do it was very late in the season when the Romans would be beginning to think, well, no one can cross the Alps now, it's too late, the snows are coming, no army is going to get across. And Hannibal, very cleverly, sees that that is the golden opportunity. It'll be difficult, it'll be uncomfortable, there'll be losses, but it's the moment to do it, and he strikes quickly and decisively. Hannibal of Carthage embarked on a campaign which was to capture the hearts and imaginations of artists, writers and filmmakers for centuries to come. He began his journey across the Alps in the winter of 218 BC with 90,000 infantry, 12,000 cavalry and 37 elephants. This was to be one of the most grueling endeavors ever undertaken by one man and thousands of mercenaries. It's almost impossible to understand how Hannibal's army followed him, given that they are actually mercenaries rather than Carthaginian citizens, unless you understand his charismatic and extremely physical form of leadership. 